Good morning, Church of the Cross family and friends. Pastor Lauren here once again. Guess what? It's a brand new month. I don't know where July went, but it is gone. It's in the history books. Uh, what's not in the history books, though, is what we're talking about now. Well, I guess it, it kind of is. Uh, so we're talking about the gospel, but not just what was, but what we have seen, what we have heard, what we've looked at and touched. Uh, 1 John 1 uh, is inspiring this whole series as the writer says, We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands. So today's focus is on daring to dream. That's uh, the idea that there's good news in the dreams that, that God places in our hearts. So I want to begin by lifting up some famous dreamers and, and I'm going to, to give you a moment to respond, popcorn amongst yourselves about uh, what it was they dreamed into existence. So uh, Thomas Edison, if you said recording and playback technology, you are correct. If you said light bulbs, you are correct. If you said film for cameras and the ability to record in, in that manner, you are correct. So he dreamed a lot of things into existence. There's another name, uh, Alexander Graham Bell. What, uh, what did he dream into being? Hello? Hello? Yes, the telephone. Uh, then we have George Washington Carver. What did he dream into existence? What he gave us was 300 uses for peanuts and hundreds more of uses for soybeans, pecans, and sweet potatoes. Contributions that changed the trajectory of the southern agricultural industry. Here's another one for you, Eli Whitley. You know this one, don't you? He gave us the cotton gin. Another invention that, that changed the trajectory of, of the southern industrial, of uh, the agriculture industrial uh, movement. It's, uh, through this invention, uh, cotton was able to be separated more quickly and, and it became a staple of which many clothes were made and are still made. How about uh, Johannes Gutenberg? Ever read a book? He gave us the printing press. There's another one, uh, Benjamin Franklin. Ben invented a number of things. We might say democracy, kind of an American uh, form. He was involved in that. But uh, Ben gave us lightning rods. If your house has never burned down in a, in a thunderstorm, you can thank Ben. He gave us bifocals. It's, uh, this was one of his inventions. And there's this stove that he invented that's given his, his name, the, the Ben Franklin stove. Uh, so he was a prolific inventor. Uh, how about this name, Henry Ford? No, he didn't give us the automobile. What he gave us was mass production, this, this idea that instead of workers moving, the assembly line would move, and they would stay pretty much in one location, and the cars would come to them. Uh, increased production levels tremendously. Here's, here's a Kansas uh, reference, uh, uh, James Naismith. Now, you wildcats may not appreciate this name, but, but of course, uh, Naismith gave us basketball. Naismith Hall in uh, Lawrence uh, on the campus of KU was named after him. Here's another name, Jonas Salk. People in our generation have a great deal to be thankful for. Uh, my high school science teacher had polio when he was young. My, my aunt had polio when she was young, but thanks to to Jonas Salk, uh, we have this polio vaccine, and that's, that's been eradicated in our lifetime. So, uh, and how about this name, uh, Steve uh, Jobs? I know, right? Uh, he's given us Apple computers and the iPhone. And one last name, that's, uh, this may surprise you to know that, that she was a dreamer, the name Hetty Lamar. So, what do we know about her? Well, we know she was a beautiful 
movie star, and, but did you know that she also uh, was an inventor who developed the, the missile guidance system that was used in World War II to guide torpedoes uh, in that war. So, uh, and some folks say that she was actually even a spy for the, for the United States. But, so here are these people, and the one thing that they all had in common is that, that they, they were dreamers, that they had ideas, that they had visions to do something that was not necessarily for themselves, but was for the common good. To, uh, ideas and dreams and visions to make the world a better place. So our opening scripture this morning talks about how God's spirit is poured out on God's people. And so we're joining uh, Luke and the, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, where he goes back and repeats, has Peter repeat what, uh, what was said in the, the prophet Joel. Uh, as, as he says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Our opening song this morning is a sort of a sung invocation, an invitation to the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and our minds and, and just inspire us and lead us into new and different things. So, so join us as together we pray this song, the Spirit song.
on this great invention. So, so today, God, we pray that we might have dreams that will inspire us to jump out of bed in the morning and to greet the day with new vigor, with new excitement, with, uh, with just new dreams and new visions, things not only to benefit ourselves, but to benefit all of the world. So, so let your gospel take its, its place in our lives and, and allow us to dream and to bring these dreams into existence. This we ask as we now sing our, our opening prayer song, Blessed Be Your Name, that, that reminds us that in all times and all places we are to, to bless you and to give you thanks. Freedom, 
not physical freedom. So, the first thing I'm going to do is show you that I have bound my leg with a log chain and I have tied uh, the chair with the same chain and I've got a padlock down here. I think you can see the padlock and it's, uh, it's got a key in it. So, first of all, the chain represents the devil. The devil sometimes chains us up, locks us into some very bad patterns. The padlock uh, is our soul. And uh, when, when the devil locks our soul up, we're not open to the good news that the Bible has. So, we need a key to unlock the chain and get rid of the devil. Well, the key, the key represents the Holy Spirit. That was the gift that uh, Jesus gave us at Pentecost, that first Pentecost that we had a lesson about several weeks ago. So, I'll keep this key and, uh, and we'll proceed on with the lesson. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read from Mark chapter 8 and I believe it's verses, two verses, 34 and 35. This is an invitation to uh, Jesus gave his followers and the crowd uh, this invitation to be disciples, to do what uh, Jesus had planned for them. Chapter 8, starting with verse 34. Then he called his disciples and the crowds that were there to come over and listen. If any of you wants to be my follower, he told them, you must put aside your own pleasures and shoulder your cross and follow me closely. If you insist on saving your life, you will lose it. Only those who dispose of their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to be really alive. Now, uh, I, will, I will continue by reading from Galatians uh, 5.13. For, dear brothers, you have been given freedom, not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. So God has given us this commandment, if you will, to use our love and uh, our, our service to extend uh, our freedom to others. What is it that we should do when we extend our love and service to others? Well, I have a list. Right now, one of the things we can do is limit the extent of the virus. Wear masks. Wash our hands often. Where necessary, uh, honor social distancing. And as always, we should tell the truth. And if you've been listening to any political advertisements or other news items on TV, you must notice 
that the truth is not always told in full extent. They leave out some parts. You can't believe everything at first glance. Another thing you should do is be kind and love others. And listen carefully. Make wise choices. Don't believe everything you hear at first glance. And then finally, the Bible says, if you are going to be disciples of Jesus, you need to learn to spread the news, the good news. So, I'll uh, conclude the Bible reading now by uh, reading from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go, what to do, and then you won't always be doing the wrong things that your nature wants you to do. So I think you can understand that we have stray thoughts and we need to call upon the Holy Spirit from time to time to reinforce our values and our actions. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And that's why being chained to this chair, being locked up, we need to learn to unlock ourselves, unlock our soul, so that we can hear the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So, now I guess I'm uh, finished with the lesson and all I need to do before I go home is to unlock this chain that's on me and, uh, and then I can get up and, and walk out. So I'll check my pockets for the key. It's not in that pocket. It's not in that pocket. Oh, where did I put that key? I don't want to walk home dragging this chair with a chain. Oh, I think I put it in my shirt pocket. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I'm, I'm good to go. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Will you bow with me in prayer for our offering? Gracious God, we bring our gifts to your altar, asking you to dedicate them to the work of love and compassion in the world. We learned from Jesus, who had compassion on the crowds, who gathered to hear him teach, that putting what we have in the hands of Jesus can bring abundance. Multiply these gifts with the love in which they are offered, that they may bring hope to those in need and might glorify and celebrate your love for all your children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes to us from the book of Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 through 11. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream that I've had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come down and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of this week's sermon is Working on a Dream. It's had a number of of different titles, but I uh, just recently heard again the Bruce Springsteen song, Working on a Dream, and it reminded me of, that we're really always working on dreams, that, that, that we have these hopes and these plans and these adventures as, as we get up every morning. Uh, so this morning we're, we're talking about and we're seeing and sharing the gospel that, that I've seen at Bravo Sliders and Bites, which is at 1402 East Iron Avenue here in Salina, Kansas. It's, it's in the, the very same building that Gourmet Go used to be in before they moved over on Ohio. So in this, this uh, video, we're going to see three segments. Uh, we were joining uh, Ben and Jasmine, the co-owners of, of this, uh, this restaurant, as they talk about realizing their dreams and, and the hard work that, that comes with that. So, so we're going to join uh, Jasmine and Ben now. And what I want you to understand is that when we shot this, we didn't realize that uh, we didn't think it all the way through. There's, it's a working business and there's a lot of background noise. So, so you may have to turn your volume up a little bit to be able to, to understand what, what's being said there. It, it sounded good in the recording, but then when we played it back, it's like, oh, so, uh, so let's, let's uh, walk along here with Ben and Jasmine as they talk about this vision for this dream that they had as they have been working on a dream. Hey folks, uh, as, as we've been talking about, we're doing this series uh, based on a book written by what was John Hall called Waiting for Gospel. And if ever there was a time when people were waiting for gospel, waiting for, for bits of good news, now is the time with, with everything that's going on in the newspapers and, and just all around us. So we are here at Bravo's Sliders and Bites uh, uh, with Ben and Jasmine, who's right back behind Molly. So Jasmine, come on around and, and let's just let, you, uh, let the folks see you. They are the owner of this restaurant. It was an upstart. Uh, they began before COVID-19, but uh, as luck would have it, just shortly after they opened the first half, this, uh, the, the front half of the building where, where we are now seated, it's, they opened it just the back half and just had the drive through window, but then business was, was looking encouraging, so they opened the, first, uh, the front half here, and uh, lo and behold, COVID-19 hit, and I think, what did you get, a week of, of people inside of the 
in the room. They still have it, so that's where we are. If you'll just kind of look around, Molly, show us around a little bit. You can see it's a very family-centered business. Uh, uh, over there we have the little guy, which uh, this is your oldest son. His name is? Oh, he's, he's almost our baby. He's, he's the, the second baby. Well, but I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. our oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you you. all this stuff together from various uh, sources. Really exciting too. I mean, I mean we can't wait to get it back open. But... So here we are. It's uh, this week we're talking about uh, dreaming dreams and living into them. And uh, Jasmine has this uh, fantastic quote. If we could get her to share it now. She, she said that there's, there's just one thing that she wants the folks from the church to remember and to know and to understand. So, Jasper, would you share that with us, please? No matter what you're trying to achieve, stop trying and just be. Just do. Stop trying. Thank you. So, uh, if you have dreams, you heard what the lady said. So, we're going to talk about this dream. Ben, you and I have been sitting here visiting for a while. I just, when I explained to you why why Ben Lee and why Bravo, and I, I've seen this business come from the ground up. That's, I, mean, I was here in the back room when, when they were putting the stove in, and I mean, just when you were bare bones and, and the dream was really beginning. And, and I know your vision was to, to provide a place uh, where, where quality food could be had, but also it, was, it wasn't just that, you're community minded. So as Ben and I talked about here, I've watched this, this restaurant really come into being uh, from the very beginning. That's when they started in, in the back room, there was a partition between the front half of the building and the, and the back half. And they dreamed about opening the front. And of course, as, as we talked about, that's, uh, uh, their dreams uh, were, were big, but uh, COVID-19 came. Along, but part of the dream that inspired me, even from the very beginning, was what Ben talked about when when he envisioned this this business that he was starting. And so, and the the, the video that we're about to see, he, he talks about his vision for for uh, several things. Uh, but with one of these things that I really want to focus on, he talks about three T's. And then I see plus one more T as, as he talks about their, their business being about quality and quantity and affordability. Uh, all of these end in T, of course. But I, I also see in this dream and, and tried to, to just pull that out of Ben, his vision for community. Because the, one of the things that inspired me to, to come and, and talk to Ben and Jasmine about their business is the, the way that they are participating in and giving back to the community. So again, I encourage you to, to keep your volume up loud because there's some important stuff in here. There's free food involved, uh, potentially for you, but for people in the community. So, so let's listen to, to the three T's plus one as, as Ben describes them. So we, we've talked a little bit about these bags spread out behind me. And I've, I've shared this news with our TLC group, uh, a group of uh, senior citizens that meets every Thursday. They continue to meet even now on Zoom. Uh, so you want to uh, just explain to folks what these bags are all about? But this is this is a way that you're giving back to the community. Yeah. So there's another T. Another T, I like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's just free senior meals. Um, it's nothing spectacular. Uh, it's if, yeah, we do a hot or cold option every week. Um, you can just one slider, a bag of chips, and a snack uh, for free. I mean, if, 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 if they want to come through, they just say they're here for the senior meal. We're going to feed you. Fantastic. And you didn't just uh, you don't just focus on seniors. Have you done some some meals for kids as well? Yeah, we done. We've actually done a lot. Uh, a lot. Uh, we did when the schools were uh, when the schools weren't doing their free lunches over the summer. We jumped on with Rocket and Media, and we did a hundred free sack lunches. That that was the very first start. It was the hundred sack lunches for the, for the kids, 
and it seems kind of back to back in days. Um, we also we done St. Francis. We we gave for their cell for their inner school summer. We uh, gave them. We've done. We gave them a lot. We did uh, some for uh, the, the ER. We, we gave them a free dinner. Mm -hmm. and that shit changed because you know the ER. They're not allowed. To, they weren't allowed to leave their shit from the hospital, so they're there all day. So we got to set up that that shit change that we provided a whole meal. And I got, you know, worked at Martinelli's for such a long time. I got him to help me out. We do some right. salads in it. Uh, we were supposed to get some from, uh, we were supposed to get some cheesecakes donated. That didn't work out. So we made cheesecakes and we so make just throwing those in. And so we were, no one ever talked about that, you know. So it was just something that we did behind the scenes that mm -hmm. for, the, for the hospital. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, it's impressive. So, I mean, you, you really are involved in the community. Good not just to make it fun, but uh, obviously this is this is good publicity. Uh, but uh, I mean, you could you could get more bang for your buck uh, uh, by just buying it. Um, so why do you do this? Deal? And this is what I've always wanted to do, and what I did before. You know, I, I gave away I gave away so much before. You know, and, and, and we're not. I mean, I. I there's a whole other level I want to take you to, but you have to walk that line because when we were giving out so much stuff, we had everyone coming to us thinking that we should, I mean, keep giving out even more. And I'm like, well, at the, at the bottom line, we are a business and we can't do more than we're already doing. We're doing a lot. And, uh, and so, unfortunately, we can't. But it's just, it's, I, I, you want to help people because you want to be that place where, say, you know, You've ever been in tough times yourself, and you didn't know if you had someone out there that's willing to help out. We want them to be like, well, they do, mm -hmm. and so it, it kind of gives us more. Some of the stories we've heard for the things we've done is mm -hmm. phenomenal. So it just keeps motivating you to keep going. To keep, I mean, we have, we have, I have a whole long-term plan uh, on things I want to do. To, you know, keep giving back. And that's why we are here, Ben. Uh, when I thought about, you know, what's what's forming my heart in this community? Where do I see gospel? Where do I see good news in the midst of hard times? It's right here at Bravo. With, with with this heart that you have for, for people in the community, uh, your own experience of, of hardship, and just out of that, of giving back to others. And, and that's, that's a big deal. So I just I want to celebrate that. And I want others to be able to celebrate that. There's just not enough good news these days. So uh, in this, this third and, and final section of this interview with Ben, we're going to talk about kind of the, the same thing that our opening song, what our opening songs talked about, and blessed be your name. Now sometimes in hardships we find ways to, to bless God and to bless others, people, other people. Um, so as, as Ben shares his story, it reminded me, as you will see as, as he and I talk, that of, of Joseph's story and that like uh, Joseph's story, Ben's story and our story all have beginnings and middles and ends. So I'll pick it up here after we we hear from Ben again as, as he talked about how the hardships that he's experienced in life have, have led to his desire to, to be a blessing to other folks. So uh, I shared with you that this week in worship, the, uh, the scripture message that we're hearing is about Joseph uh, and his, uh, his dream that's, uh, uh, and we, we will have touched on this in our scripture reading, but as, as you and I talked about, uh, Joseph had uh, told his brothers about this dream he had where, where they were bowing down and, and, uh, to him. And, and as a result of this dream, uh, he didn't just mention it once, but he mentioned it twice. And uh, so they despised him so much that they sold him into slavery. Uh, so uh, with this dream that he had, and it's, it's a dream that God put in him, it's, uh, he, he ran into a lot of headwinds on the way to achieving that dream. I thought about you and, and the business here and the headwinds with the COVID-19. But uh, when we get to the kind of the tail end of the story and, and Genesis 50, uh, right around 
verse 20, his brothers stand before Joseph and they recognize him as, as the brother that they've sold into slavery and, and see that he's now the most powerful man, the second most powerful man in Egypt. And they fear for their lives, so they bow down before him. And he, he just, he said, uh, I, I, don't, I don't judge you, I'm not in the place of God. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it to for good so that many lives can be saved through it. So you've taken the hardships that life has given you, the headwinds that, that you've been handed with opening in, in the pandemic, and, and all of these things, and have, have turned them into a way to bless others uh, through uh, the, your experiences. And that, my friend, is gospel. Again, as I said, Joseph's story, like all stories, has a beginning and a middle and an end. It starts with this this big and ludicrous dream that, that he doesn't even understand. And, and then, of course, uh, as dreams uh, often will, I mean, we have dreams and people shut them down. So his brothers did not like the sound of his dreams and sold him into slavery. So, uh, so his story had a, a beginning and a middle. And the middle was, uh, was not beautiful. That's uh, all of our stories, I think, have beginnings and middles and, and ends. Every chapter of our lives has a beginning and a middle and an end. The beginning of my, my career at General Motors, uh, you know, I just thought, boy, if I could get that job, that would be all I want. And, and about 10 years in, I kind of woke up and I thought, man, what was I thinking? It's, uh, so that dream ended, but another one began, and I began going to school. And, and, it's, uh, and, and just, I was always about business, and I had a nickname. Uh, folks would call me High Stepper. That's, and, and I mean, it was not a, a, a name that was meant to, in, uh, to endear me to them. That's, uh, they saw that I had dreams. They saw that I wanted something different, something bigger, something better, that God had a different plan for me. And I didn't know what it was, but I was living into that. So uh, I got pushed back. See, and that's, that's what uh, Ben kind of encountered in, in his restaurant. Not, not necessarily from... Uh, from people, but just from life itself. I mean, we have dreams, and, and it seems like we just encounter headwinds. That's no matter what they are. Joseph encountered headwinds. I encountered headwinds. Anybody who has a dream and tries to live into it will encounter headwinds. But, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, we're living in a story right now with a beginning and a middle and an end, and, and we're counting on our dreamers to move this story along, just as, as Jonas Saul moved along the story with polio and, and every other dreamer has come along and dreamed a better world and made that happen. We're counting on our dreamers to come forward now. So what we're doing right now is dreaming our way into the future. That's it. The good news that we celebrate as Christians is put forth in the first few words of the Bible. And I take a little bit of liberty here by, by taking it from the past tense to taking it to the present and the future tense. Uh, in the beginning, uh, Scripture says, the earth is formless and empty. Darkness is over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. God says, let there be light. And there is light. In the same way, we, we, we come today and we remember this same spirit that's being talked about by Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, where, where he looks back at, at Joel and has, has Peter say, on that day, the, the, the Spirit of God, God's Holy Spirit will be poured out on all people and their young people will prophesy and, and their elders will dream. And, this so is the same spirit uh, that God poured out in Jesus Christ on that night in which he gave himself up for us. As, as he gathered with his disciples in the upper room and he, and he took the bread from the meal and he, he gave thanks to God and then offered it to his disciples, to all of his disciples across all time, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And that same night, he took the, the fruit of the vine as United Methodists uh, uh, grape juice. Uh, and he gave thanks to God and offered it to his disciples, saying, take, drink. 
This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of God's mighty acts in and through Jesus Christ that every time we come to this table, we do so offering ourselves in, in thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's mystery for us as we, as we now proclaim that great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So now, please join us as we pray to this God uh, whose grace reached out and changed everything on that, on that night as, uh, as he raised Jesus from the dead three days later. O oh, Heavenly Father, great giver and restorer of life, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice. God, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we Maybe for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, God, make us one with Christ, make us one with each other, and make us one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. So friends, uh, again, in the United Methodist Church, we do practice an open table, and that means that, that we believe that, that none are precluded from taking this sacrament, so long as they understand that it is a sacrament, that it is a means of grace, that this is the way that God reaches out and changes everything by, by pouring his grace into our being uh, through these gifts. So. Uh, I invite you now to, to open your communion cup and to do so carefully. So, uh, we look forward to the day when we will be able to do this in person, but we are thankful for the technology that allows us to do this now as in our own homes and our own locations. So if we all have opened our elements, I invite you now to take a the body of Christ, knowing that this is the, the bread of life that, that God has made available to all, and to and take this the cup of the new covenant uh, that God has opened in and through Jesus Christ, knowing that uh, that through this uh, Christ makes all things new, and take the bread of life and the cup of new life and make them yours. I invite you to join us now in our communion song, and we'll have our, our prayer immediately after that. So uh, we give thanks that this is a day of new beginnings. Let us proclaim that truth and let us dream our dreams. <laughs>
God, we give thanks uh, in advance for the answers to our living problems that you have placed in the dreamers that you have made as your servants. We give thanks for the dreams that, that are just lying fallow out there, God, waiting to be realized, waiting to be shared with the world. God, give us the wisdom to encourage and support uh, our dreamers and their dreams as they are the very gifts that have been sent from you. So as, as we pause now, we, we think of every situation that needs a dreamer to address it, God, and we bring all of these things into your loving presence now. God, we leave these things with you now, knowing that even what we've not spoken, God, you know our hearts and you know our beings and you know our needs and, and you work to deliver that. So we give thanks in advance as we now pray as your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have one announcement this week, and that's in regard to an upcoming blood drive on Thursday, August 13th from noon to 6 p.m. There will be a Red Cross blood drive at Church of the Cross. Many drives have been canceled recently, which has led to blood donations being more important than ever. Please visit redcrossblood.org to sign in to donate. Thanks. Hi, Lucy. Hey, F, what's up? Not a whole lot, except I've really been concerned about catching this corona. You know, the doctor said I have to stay careful. And I well, don't know what to do. You know, I've been thinking about it, too. Okay. And What's I've your got, idea? I've got several ideas. I can just imagine. My brain worked overtime on these ideas <laughs> because oh, Ethel... Oh, help me now. Ethel, I want to keep you safe. safe. Thank you. Plan number one. How about if you hold posies? Okay. And okay. when we go out, you take them everywhere you go. And I can't I, wait to hear this. And okay. really, it's a double one. Mm -hmm. Because if something really happens and they don't work, you're ready. Okay. Show me how you'd look. Very good. Okay, now, what is this? A fly swatter. It will kill the coronas. I'm sure you know how you to You walk that. around with these, and as they spring onto you, I'll beat them with the fly this swatter. This isn't going to work. Why? They'll come down. And they're pretty small, they'd probably go through the hole. Exactly. Okay, plan one's a bust. Shall we try plan two? Why not? I have some safety spray. It's very safe. And it kind of looks like Clorox. It's not Clorox. I wouldn't put My Clorox hair. on your head. Okay. It's already white. I know. We can't make it any white. No. Or you couldn't be Silver Fox. That's right. Ethel the Silver Fox. So, I will just fluff your hair and spray you as we go. Please. This says poison. Oh, I didn't read the label. I'm sorry. Plan B? Out no the good. window. Okay. Well, I know you're going to like plan C. Plan C Just is because I lived on the farm doesn't mean that mice trap worked for me. This isn't a mouse trap. What is it? This is a safety trap. Oh. It says precision strike technology. So it won't hurt you. It'll only hit the little coronas. Ethel, I would never endanger your life. See, look at it. Isn't it cute? See, it even, looks just like a mouse trap. And it's gray. It'll match your hair. And they'll just go in here. We'll get a million of them, and we'll pitch them. That's not good. Let work. me see how it come over here. Don't be stubborn. Sometimes, Ethel, you can be so stubborn. Well, how am well, I going to get that up there? Your, Hold it well, around we'll like this. Well, we'll use super glue. No way. That's not going to work. Plan I C need a real doesn't work. Solution. Okay, I've got one more possibility, but you're not going to like this one. What is it? I've heard 
they fear electricity. Well, so do I. We can hook it up to a car battery. No way. I do not every, even like a, 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 an A battery. Ethel, calm down. When we come home from an adventure, we'll hook it up to the car battery, and we'll just give you one shot. No way. Put that away. Okay. You've used all my examples. I, I heard the other choice. day that Dr. Fauci is suggesting we wear masks. So, Like Halloween masks? No. These I got from a group in town that's making them. Is this for a fundraiser? And there's one for you. You just put them on your face, around your nose, squish the little metal part. No, I can't see. Lucy. I can't see. I've gone blind. Yes, Lucy. <laughs> now up over your nose. Don't there touch you go. my nasal passages. How do I look? Look, you look darling. Now you think these will keep the corona away? I think that. Well, they'll help. Well, do you have any clue where people could get these masks? Yeah, but I wanted to show you another feature. What's the other you feature? You can turn them around, and they're oh. reversible. Oh, that's pretty dandy. This. That's pretty dandy, Ethel. Maybe Ricky would like these. I think Ricky would like them. We'd it. have to cut a hole, though, so he could see.
My friends, my prayer for you is that may God's Holy Spirit be poured out on you and all people. May your sons and your daughters prophesy. May your young see visions and your elders dream dreams this very day and all that follow forever and ever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you.